Hey everybody, this is Blue Knight with another Rise of the Wish King commentary. We have another 1 vs. 1 on Fords of Eisen 2 on 2.02 .02 version 4.0. We have Malhur as Mordor against uh, DJ Parson as Men. And from what I've seen, this game uh, is going to be an interesting one. It was uploaded uh, to the replay system on gamereplays.org uh, in the Rise of the Wish King section. And there seems to be some positive feedback about it, so it's going to be interesting to watch this. Now, Mauhur, of course, is one of the best uh, players right now for Rise of the Wish King, so I'm sure it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, now, so far, both players just getting uh, themselves set up. We have a barracks start for the men. We have a barracks being built right beside the farm here to protect it uh, from an assault from this side. So if anybody wants to attack, or if Mahur wants to attack the barracks, he's going to have to attack it from the right side, of course. Over here we have an Orc Pit start. Pretty typical for Mordor. Second Orc Pit's going up now. He's going to need to get a couple of those up to outspam his opponent. Since the Orcs are going to be a lot weaker than these uh, Gondor soldiers. Let's just quickly take a look at, uh, of course, we have Rallying Call. And War Chant. As the first power is being chosen. And now it's just a matter of uh, waiting to see what happens. First orc units are out. And so are the Gondor soldiers. Almost at the same time. And it looks like they're both heading straight through the middle. Unless Mauer is planning to take a sudden turn this way. Okay, it looks like they're going to meet up. Of course the soldiers are going to be stronger than those orcs. And they're targeting them. Mauhur is retreating with his orcs, knowing he's not going to win that battle. But it seems the Gondor soldiers are determined to move forward, so the orcs can still get by. And now these Gondor soldiers moving to intercept the orcs, while the first ones continue on their way to try to take out some slaughterhouses. Mauhur is still trying to move his orcs away. He can't fight these soldiers. He knows he's not going to beat them. And Parsons reaches a slaughterhouse, uses Rallying Call, but decides to stop to fight these orcs. And he's very effective at doing so with his uh, shield wall and uh, old ground stance along with Rallying Call to keep his units alive. But ultimately, if Mauhur just keeps sending orcs, it's going to be a problem. These orcs still getting chased down. But it doesn't look like they really managed to do a lot. And more Gondor soldiers heading from the north while Maurer is busy dealing with these ones in the south. And the soldiers are still determined to try to get that slaughterhouse, but again they're forced into combat. Doing pretty well, but they're slowly being thinned out. These orcs were finally killed. Mauhur no longer has a presence in Parson's base. Whereas Parson has two units. And we can see actually Mauhur has already gotten uh, level two uh, uh, Harajan Palace. And he already has Lancers out. So that was very quick. Only two orc pits and he's already on his, uh, he's already getting Lancers. Very fast reaction there. And of course a very good choice because the Men of the West player has been relying on Gondor soldiers for swordsmen. They're no match for those Lancers. Now we finally are seeing Pikes. And he's gonna have to get more of them because he's gonna have to watch out for those Lancers. The Lancers are moving around on the northern flank. We have Gondor Knights out. The Lancers buffed with War Chant trying to take on the Knights. Orcs attacking from the back. So that was a pretty quick stables as well from uh, Parsons. And the knights are forced to retreat. But Parsons is sending more units. He's got three Gondor soldier battalions and one Rohan spearman battalion. This could be a problem. Of course, Mauer could use his lancers to carefully trample around the pikes. Because there aren't really a lot of pikes. And we see here the Gondor uh, knights showed up again. This time two of them ready to destroy these orcs. And, ooh. Mauhur does manage to get a bunch of soldiers, but he does take some damage from those pikes. 
right now, Barsons has the advantage. But Malher is sending two work units down here. Uh, Barsons' builder might be in trouble because he's building a farm right beside them. As soon as this goes down, it's going to be a problem for his builder. And now, it looks like uh, Malher has lost his Lancers. And the builder might go down. The builder needs to be moved. And it doesn't look like he is. It's possible he's just stuck. Sometimes that happens. These Gondor Knights being used very effectively. Killing lots of works, just avoiding those Easterlings. Doing quite a lot of damage. And Parsons really trying to bring down that Harajan Palace. But only takes out about a quarter of its health. Which is just not enough. These Knights are going to be forced to retreat because of these Easterlings. And meanwhile, over here... Malhur's orcs are getting trampled. For some reason, the knights turned around. I don't know what that was about. Looks so if they're going to get these guys first, but this farm might go down. Yep, it's down. And the lancers are showing up. But they're outnumbered right now. More Gondor Knights showing up to trample those orcs. Not much left of those Lancers. I don't know how much damage they can still do. They're being chased by these Knights. But at least Malhur is keeping uh, uh, Parsons' uh, Knights busy rather than letting them just harass his base. And we have more Knights, though, heading this way from the eastern side. And as it stands, Malhur is still on two orc pits and one uh, Harajan palace. And his opponent, one barracks and one stables. We have Faramir on the field. So our first hero. It looks like Malhur wants to get this uh, troll lair and uh, in. But he doesn't really have enough forces, it seems, to take out this troll. These Easterlings being used to protect these archers as they attack. War chant in use again. And looking at the powers, Parsons can almost get his 10 point power. Malfour already can. He's going to need to make a decision. And this slaughterhouse is going to go down. So far, Parsons has played very well in this game, really keeping the pressure on Malfour. And it looks like he's also summoning hobbits on top of his army. These hobbits are going to pose a problem to Malfour's troops. Of course, we still have some knights. The Horizon Lancer is being used pretty effectively to block the knights, but they can't fight them. They just can't uh, beat them. The knights are pretty strong, and of course, there were more of them, although it looks like they've taken heavy casualties. There's only one unit left. There were two of them in this situation. I mean, at this point, it might be better to retreat this unit and heal him. Actually, do they have... Uh, does uh, Parsons have a well somewhere? It would be a good idea to set up a well. I don't think I see one, though. As Mahur is still going after this troll there. Yes, he took out the troll and now he's destroying the actual lair. But Parsons is doing damage to his base. However, Mahur has tons of troops right now. He's really producing them quickly. He's got one unit of Rajan Lancer slowly rebuilding, but now they have to chase down this uh, Gondor Knight unit. But the Gondor Knight units are buffed. So it's probably not a good idea to engage them right now. It looks like they decided to engage the Lancers instead, and Malhur's going to have to watch out here. He should retreat his Lancers, but he looks like he's going to lose them. He's probably uh, busy watching the front of his base and not noticing that uh, his Lancers at the back were in danger. And here, I think this was industry that was used. And unfortunately for Malhur, he could lose this, although it looks like because it hit level 3, it's actually shooting down the Knights very effectively. And yeah, it survived. Lost more than half of its health. But look at this, 110 resources, extremely powerful. Very important to keep that slaughterhouse alive. It's going to help his economy in a massive way. And Parsons' attack was repelled. Uh, Boromir is now on the field with a couple of Gondor soldiers heading to through the middle to attack. His farm was rebuilt, but the Easterlings are heading there. 
It looks like Easter, um, and yeah, these Easterlings are actually being produced at this inn. Come, peasants. You must rise and the builder up again in trouble, but this time he gets away. Are her moving to surround his opponent? Boy, these orcs are actually just leaving for some reason. Now they're going to be chased down by the knights. Nice use of tainted land. Boromir's horn as well. Gothmod doing quite a bit of damage and leveled up to level 2. He has his fury ability, which is very formidable. Boromir could be in trouble here. Looks like he's chasing him, but Boromir is running away, and that's a good move. By Parsons, it's not a good idea to hang around in that situation. And that tainted land would certainly not help. We have two barracks. So now uh, Parsons is going to try to match uh, Malhor in terms of spamming units. So Malhor still only has uh, two orc pits in this situation and one palace. Although, of course, he has his uh, inn as well. They shouldn't neglect that. So he really has four unit production buildings. And it doesn't look like uh, Parsons is aware yet that this inn was actually captured. He's probably going to notice when Easterlings keep showing up that there's something going on there. And the builder was left there, unfortunately. Easy, easily killed by Gothmog in one hit. That farm's going to go down. And here again, we're seeing Mauher trying to do some damage. Those knights are really posing... Uh, Oh, they, were, they have been posing a problem, but for some reason now they're just standing in the middle. Okay, it looks like... Okay, I thought for a second they were going to attack uh, Maurer's base, but it turns out they're going to be used to take out this work unit after all. Saving this farm. We're seeing action happening all over the place right now on this map. So this is what's nice about these players. And look at that, we already have the summon Rohirrim. 15 point powers, so this is very fast. This game played very quickly. Look at that, very useful to, have to summon these against Mordor because Mauer really doesn't have much in the way of uh, pikes right now in his base. He is building Mumak Kill, however, which is going to be fun. He's got a Mumak pen. And that uh, slaughterhouse with industry is gone. Mauer looks like he could lose some orc pits. Well, he's over here, if, uh, Parsons were here, man, actually taking quite a bit of damage. When that Mumon kill shows up, that's going to be fun to watch. We do have a level 3, uh, level 2 stables now being upgraded to level 3. We're going to see Knights of Dal Amrith, potentially. I don't think I saw any Rohirrim at all so far. The stables are just being straight upgraded to level 3. Perhaps uh, Parsons is thinking of some kind of surprise attack. Gothmog very low on health. He's in big trouble. The Rohirrim are determined to kill him. They probably will, or maybe not. There's only one left. And Gothmog is still alive, but all these units still chasing him. Oh, and that Lancer is dead. So Mauher survives the onslaught. He did lose one Orc Pit. He took a lot of damage uh, to his Mumak pen. But he has his first Mumak kill out. I always thought they were called Mumak kill. Why is it Mumak? Maybe Mumak is singular and Mumak is plural or something. Now we're trying to do some damage to Parsons' base, but he's not going to be able to do a lot. Surrounded by these units with Boromir. Not sure why Boromir is in aggressive stance in this situation. It's not really necessary and he'll just take extra damage, which means he'll have to take some time to heal that damage. And now, finally, things have calmed down a little bit. There's a lot of fighting, but it looks like we're going to have more fighting in just a second. These Easterlings are heading for trouble up here. Of course, Pikemen versus Swordsmen, never a good situation, and these Swordsmen happen to be buffed by Farmir's leadership because he hit level 6. So they're going to go down, and perhaps this will be the point where uh, Parsons realizes there's an inn here. And Maru's just been producing Easterlings constantly and sending them north. Now this inn is still around, and look at that. This slaughterhouse is buffed with industry, which is interesting because it's far away from his base. But it's also an area that his opponent might not notice for a while. 
but it looks like he is sending units this way. It's still possible he'll just go around here and just come straight to this slaughterhouse and not even notice this one. It's possible. But of course, uh, it's a big risk nevertheless. But obviously as Malheur just saw, uh, even the slaughterhouse that was in his base where, you know, you think it's safest, can still go down very fast, especially through a power like Summoner or Harem. Now where's that Moomark going? Straight to the middle. Gothmog running around here. And yes, this inn was destroyed. Parsons took it out. He is not currently capturing it, so Mahur can rebuild it. Now let's take a look at the situation, actually. Uh, 19 power points, almost 20 for Parsons. So that's going to be interesting when he gets his 25 point power. mahur has got 12 power points. He did get uh, Warchant and Tainted Land there. And Industry. While his opponent... Uh, Got hobbits rallying call. Someone will hear him. Actually, I'm going to stick to uh, Parson's view for now. Because I want to see when he gets 25 points. And he's destroying things down here and up here as well. Gothmog, though. Gothmog is here, and Gothmog has splash damage, so he's murdering these units. And Mauher was like the winner of that battle. And here we have another battle down here. Mauher attacking again. Another builder went down. They're dying a lot for Parsons. He's got 23 power points though. Down here, you have buffed, uh, well, they have leadership, these units. Uh, and now they're buffed the Rallying Call as well. They're very powerful. Boromir and Faramir leading the fight here. Getting a lot of damage. You have 25 points. You know what that means, Army of the Dead. I wonder where it's gonna be used. Are we gonna see it right now or are we gonna see it later? Could of course take out this Muma kill and anything else that Mauer has. Now he could attack Mauer's base and use it there to take out any units that he built. Or he could try to repel this attack. Maybe the Mumak is a problem. But he is saving it for now. It's probably worth saving it for the most opportune moment. Tainted land and use buffing these orcs. Hobbits being used to reinforce the men. And so far as this has been a very interesting game to watch, we have the armor upgrade for Malher's Fortress. That should help uh, protect it. And we have the armor upgrade actually for men as well. Minorian Stonework. Which means men can go for Ivory Tower and Malher could potentially go for the uh, Gorgoroth Spire. And here Gothmog. Oh, and here we go. It is being used on Malher's base. It's going to kill all these units and Gothmog is in massive trouble. He's going to try to run away. He needs to get out of there. Can he get away? He is being chased by some units. Meanwhile, these guys chasing everything they can. Mauher trying to get all of his units away from this area. His Mumak also moving away. But the army of the dead don't last very long, so you can, as long as you, you know, put a bit of distance, you can save yourself. Gothmog is almost dead. I heard Knights of the Lamarth being, uh, being built. There we go. We do have Knights of the Lamarth. This is going to be very interesting. 390 out of 600 CP right now for the men of the West player. And Mordor, Mauhor. Almost no units. Look at this. 166. He's got a big limit. 875. He really expanded very well over the map. But ultimately, uh, just doesn't uh, have much left thanks to that army of the dead. The Mumok is around. Now that Mumok is going to cause a lot of problems. They're very powerful. Look at that Boromir's dead. That charge is extremely lethal. I saw how quickly he went down there. Now I don't know how much health he actually had left before the charge began, but yeah, <laughs> you don't, you do not want to be trampled by Mumak. And now Faramir retreating with what's left. Mauhor again took a lot of damage. Lost his Rajan Palace, lost his Mumak pen. He has one orc pen now rebuilding uh, the second one. The Knights of the Lamarth being used effectively here to take out some slaughterhouses. They're level 2. Which gives them this nice ability, Inspiration. As you can see, it's basically like leadership. Near, but worth, uh, from nearby Grundar Knights in Rohirrim. And, uh-oh. The Mumak is coming back. These uh, Kodar are going to be very fast, though. Unlike the Mumak, who's actually pretty slow. Now it looks here like uh, Parsons has been expanding farms in this region. It's 
he came pretty close to uh, Mauer's base, and this Boomox is gonna kill this builder. Here we go again. Yep. He can't really build a wall hub either. He's really far away from his fortress. And of course, in 2.02, the actual range where you can build walls uh, as a distance from your fortress has actually been greatly reduced, so you can't really save your builders very easily in that situation. Gothmok losing a lot of health, but in his uh, fury mode, which at least will buff him a bit, he gets a little bit of an armor bonus. Well, 25%. The maximum you can get, I think, is plus 75% armor. So, you know, that's about a third of the way there. But his damage bonus, just wow. 200%. Too bad he can't make use of it because he's going to get himself killed if he does. And again, we have Rallying Call. Now, there is a... Yeah, there's Farmer over there. Again, doing a lot of damage here. Almost level 10. The Mouth of Sauron is on the field. Doing some damage. At this point, things are not looking very good for Mauhur and summon or hear him. This is just not what Mauhur needs right now. Those orcs are finished. The Rohirrim are going to go after that orc pit. We have Coda here as well, providing uh, inspiration to the Rohirrim. And now Mauhur's fort, fort is about to go down. It looks like, uh, yeah, he took over. He actually used Untamed Allegiance. I didn't even notice this. On the cave troll there. And he's using the cave troll here. But, uh, <laughs> and that was Faramir's ability there. One of his, I believe it's uh, this one, Wounding Arrow. Causes target monster to flee. Very useful against trolls, of course. Tom Bombadil summoned, sending the Mouth of Sauron flying, and the Coda finish him off. And oh, it looks like he's lost level 4 Coda. Not that it matters, because he's about to win this game. And wow, that that's pretty well done. That was, that was very well done by both players. There was a lot of action, and ultimately Parsons just kept hammering Mauhur over and over again. Mauhur did very well to block him for a while, but ultimately... It was just a bit too much. We still have a Mumak here. It looks like this industry buffed uh, slaughterhouse is going to go down. Fortress is still up less than half health because everything moved off to uh, take out that uh, slaughterhouse. They're trying to, uh, and of course, I guess the Mumak are a problem as well. That's probably why they retreated. It looks like he's chasing Faramir. Poor Faramir stuck in the worst possible corner of the map for him right now. Close to his enemy's base. This is how lethal Muakil are. That entire armies of units have to flee to not get trampled to death. And uh-oh. He gets away from that. That was pretty close. Trying to get protection from the rest of his units here. Rohan Spearmen are not the best pikes. Let's see how much damage they can do. Mumak is already level 5. Oh, and again we have the Wounding Arrow ability. Nice use of it. Farmy is very useful against Mordor, as you can see, because of this ability. The Hobbits again being used. Parsons is just trying to finish off his opponent. And we have a bunch of Easterlings up here. Uh, also buffed. Actually, let's just take a look at... Uh, we do have some in Dunedain Rangers being used here. And look at that. Uh, Parsons' CP limit is 300. He's lost tons of farms. Mauhar managed to bring those down, which means he can't build a lot of units. He needs to spam more farms. But right now, look at that. Boromir is almost dead, but these Yuslings are going to go down soon. Mauhu is still managing to do a lot of damage to all these farms, even as his base is getting destroyed. Well, if there's anyone who can multitask well, it's Mauhu. 15 power points right now. His worm is almost ready. And it looks like that builder is in trouble. He's going to build a slaughterhouse for now. But once that goes down, it could be a problem. The Mumak is still around defending Mauhur's base very effectively. That turned out to be a really good choice for Mauhur getting that Mumak pen just because he's been so effective at uh, protecting his fortress here. 
Now we're seeing more slaughterhouses. Uh, he still only has one orc bait here. I don't know if he built more somewhere else. It's possible. He can he can spam cave trolls, of course, thanks to the untamed allegiance being used there. That's that's a bit overkill having that many units chase of uh, three easterlings. You don't really need that much, but they're gonna die instantly anyway. And that farm's being built there. Rangers here with Faramir and uh, uh oh. <laughs> We knew that was going to happen at some point. And Faramir, even though he escaped the Mumak for so long, still went down. And this level 3 slaughterhouse is still safe. The, in the effect of industry no longer active on it, but it still provides a nice amount of uh, resources at level 3. And... Interesting? Weird for the game to end there. It felt like uh, more could happen. Uh, but that was that was a fun game. There was so much happening, uh, and so quickly as well. Both players played admirably. Really, it was very fun to watch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will be doing more commentaries. I know there's been a bit of a long break recently with commentaries. Uh, I've been a bit busy, but I will be doing more. So stay tuned to my channel, and make sure you go to gameplays.org/rise of the witch king for more rise of the witch king content. So I'll see you guys soon.